I'm back on the record on State versus Lloyd. He's present with his attorneys. The state attorney's office is present. Let's get the jury back in, please. Stay recognized presence of the jury. Ten. All right. Welcome back, folks. State, you may call your next witness. Stephanie Dixon Daniels. Inquire. You state your name, spell your last name for the court reporter, please. Stephanie Dixon Daniels, D I X O N hyphen Daniels, D A N I E L S. And are you employed, ma'am? Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. How are you employed? I am a pharmacy tech. And how long have you been doing that? about eight, nine years. I'd like to draw your attention to the date of December the 13th, 2016. Can you tell us where you live? 6031 Lone Peak Drive. And who lived in the house with you on that day? My three children, my two grandchildren, my husband and myself. Do you know your, of your three children, one of them was a daughter? Yes, Sade Dixon. And what was her full name? Sade Lachey Dixon. And how old was she? 23, 24. Okay. You know Marquise Lloyd? Yes. See him here in the courtroom? Yes. Would you point to where he's sitting and tell us what he's wearing? Pink collar shirt with a pink tie and a blue Carnegie sweater. You remember when you first met him? Yes. When was that? September, September, right after my birthday, about a week or so later. And for what part of the month would that have been? My birthday is September the 9th, and it was about a week later. Okay. And how were you introduced to him? My daughter introduced us. And how did she introduce him? She introduced him as her boyfriend. Now, at some point, did you form an opinion as to whether or not you approved of the relationship between your daughter and the defendant? No, I never approved the relationship from the get-go. Did you make that known? I did. Did you give any directions or instructions as far as the defendant coming to your house? To never bring him to my house after our first encounter. Did you tell that to the defendant? Yes. Did you tell him Did you make it known to him that you did not approve of the relationship with your daughter? I think he kind of knew from the first encounter. Okay. Between the first time that you met him in December 13th, where did your daughter live? On and off with him and uh, on and off again. She would be home, spend time with the kids, then she'll go back over there or he'll come get her type situation. Okay. Did he sometimes come to your home, although you had said that he was not to? He would come outside and sit in the car, okay. as far as I know.
process of, as, as you described it, off and on living with the defendant, did the daughter take any of her personal belongings to his house or to the house they were living in? I would say it would be her personal hygiene stuff, but I mean, majority of her stuff were home. Couple of clothes, outfits, okay. nothing major, curling stuff, makeup. All right. Did there come some point to when she came back home and brought her stuff back home with her? Yes. In relation to the incident of December the 13th, when was that? That was that um, Sunday. Okay, so the Sunday before the, the shooting? Yes. And did it appear that she had brought all of her belongings back home? Yes, the stuff that she had at his home, at his house. Do you know how, the goods were transported to your house? Um, Markeith had brought it back with her along with the children. Okay. What happened when he brought it back that day? Um, they put it in the garage. The garage door was open. The front of the garage mm -hmm. was open. I um, saw them outside. I opened the kitchen door to the garage mm -hmm. and I asked her, what is this? And she said, my stuff. And I said, oh, okay. Snatched to the bug, which is her baby boy, and went back in the house. One of your grandchildren? Yes. Now, on December 13th, to your knowledge, did your daughter own a firearm? Yes, she did. What kind of gun it was that she owned by that? I mean, a long gun, a pistol, revolver, do you know? It was a nine millimeter pistol. Okay. How is it that you knew she owned it? Because when she received it from her ex-boyfriend, she showed it to me, and I explained to her the situation of how I felt about guns, and she understood my fear of the guns, at the time, and we decided to put it in a lock box. At the time, only me and her had access. Now, when you say a lock box, what do you mean? It's a fireproof safe that is about yay big. Mm -hmm. I say 22 inches to 22 inches. Okay. And you know where it was kept? Yes. Where was it kept? It was kept in her room in the closet. When you, she showed you the gun and you told her it was to be stored in the lockbox, after that date, did you ever see the gun again before the shooting? No. Are there any other guns in your house? We have a shotgun that we inherited from my father-in-law who passed away. And where was that gun stored? Deep in the back of our closet, kept in a Unlo un un unloaded in a, I guess you would call it a gun bag. Mm -hmm. Never shot the thing. Were there any other guns in the house? No. Now, after the police came to your house and night of December the 13th, were you asked to check on the whereabouts of your daughter's handgun? Yes. And what did you do? I did as complied. We both went up to her, their, her room. When you say we both, who? Um, Dr. I mean, Detective Brian and the other detective, mm -hmm. Brian, um, I don't know his last name. That's okay. Detective Brian and the other detective, but I know Brian was the lead detective at the time. Mm -hmm. We walked upstairs to her room, which faces the front of the house. I couldn't get the light to cut on, so I grabbed the box and I shook it. When you say the box, you're talking about the lock box? Yes. Where was it? It was 
in the closet laying on the floor. Was it, you earlier said it was stored in the back of the closet? Yes. Was it somewhere different than where it was normally stored? It was in the front of the closet. Okay. So when you pick it up and took it, what happened? I didn't hear the gun. Is there anything else there with the box? My daughter's set of keys. And did you subsequently open the box? I was told by Detective Bryant to open the box. He asked me when I shook it, I told him it wasn't in there. And he said, could you please open the box? So I said, yes, I'll open the box. I opened the box, I laid it on the floor, opened the box, and it wasn't in there. Sometime later after this, were you shown a, a firearm? Yes. Did you recognize it? Yes. And what did you recognize it to be? Um, my daughter's um, nine millimeter pistol. To your knowledge, has she ever fired the gun? No. To your knowledge, has anyone ever fired the gun? No. So let's go back to December the 13th, 2016. Sort of start at the beginning of the day. What did you do that day? I went to work. And what time did you work till? I worked till 5.30. Okay. Went in from 9 to 5.30. And where got did you off. go from, when you got off work? I went to Valencia West Campus to take my um, final exam for my computer spreadsheet class. Okay, so you were, you were also a student at the Valencia? Yes. And after you took the test, where did you go? Um, I went home. Do you remember about what time you got home? I got home around eight-ish, mm -hmm. eight. And uh, who was in the house when you got home? My daughter, the kids, my grandkids, mm -hmm. um, Tootabug and Deshaun, and Ronald was home, and Sade. And was your other son, Dominique, home? At the time, no. He had went out. I learned that he had went out to go play ball because I had called him. Okay. So what did you do when you got home? Um, went and checked on my meatballs that I had cooked in the crock pot. Okay. What did you, what did you discover? That my husband had went to KFC and bought some chicken. Okay. So I was like, so I cooked the meatballs for nothing. And pretty much I was like, who's gonna eat my meatballs? And as a joke, my daughter said, I'll eat your meatballs, mommy. Okay. So what did you do when you discovered that um, other plans for dinner had been made? I went upstairs and took a quick shower and came back downstairs to fix my plate of KFC <laughs> okay. because nobody wanted me to finish cooking the rice and the vegetables and waiting, so we ate the KFC. What did you do after you fixed your plate? I went back upstairs. And was there anyone else upstairs? My husband at the time, he was in the shower. And did, what did you do when you went upstairs? I was on the phone with my mom talking about my test. She, we were explaining if, how do you think you felt you t did on the test? Did you study, blah, blah, blah. And I was feeding Titus at the time to the butt. And as I'm speaking to my mom on the phone, I hear pow, 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 pow. So I get, get up and I say, what the heck? Okay, now. Were you aware at that time that the defendant had come to your house that night? I had seen, when I went upstairs to, with my plate with Tuta Bug in tow, mm -hmm. um, glanced out the window, the office window, and I seen my son standing behind my car with my daughter and Marquis standing there. They were just talking. Okay. So, Nothing to be worried about. My son is handling it, and I went upstairs. 
So when you heard the pows, what did you do? I jumped up immediately. And where did you go? I ran downstairs. And did anyone go down the stairs with you? My son, Dominique. And which one of you reached the bottom of the stairs first? I did. When you got to the bottom of the stairs, where did you go? I opened the door. And where was Dominique when you opened the door? Right behind me. And tell the jury what you saw when you opened the door. I saw my daughter on my right hand side laying bleeding to death and I saw my son laying on the rock part or lead spread on the porch and they were they were both down and they were bleeding and I'm screaming to the top of my lungs that my baby was shot. Did you see anyone else when you opened the door? I saw Markeith at his car. Did you see what he was doing or did you see him do anything? No, I remember my, I was screaming, and I'm about to walk out the door, but then Dominique snatched me and closed the door. Then I heard three to four shots. Okay. And after you heard were the additional shots, what did you do? I went to run upstairs, but then I said I had my phone in my hand, so I dialed 911. And then what did you do? Then my son had walked out the door, and I walked out the door with him because the car was gone by that time. So That's while I'm on, whose car was gone? Markeith. Okay. Because he was directly in front of my door, okay. like on the street in front of my door. All right. So what did you do when you saw that he was gone? Um, I immediately started tending to my daughter because she was unresponsive. Now, at some point, did you start CPR on your daughter? I did. Now, were you doing that in the same location as where she was laying when you walked out, or did you have to move her in order to do that? No, we actually just flipped her over from where she was laying at so and how, started. How was she laying when you walked out? She was laying face down with her face looking up at the door on her chest, okay. so we had to flip her over. Okay. And was anyone taking care of your son? Between me and Dominique, no, I kept yelling, my baby, my baby, my baby, Ron, Ron, Ron. And he was, he was grunting. At least we knew we got some type of grunt from him, but Shardy wasn't responding at all. So that's when I checked her pulse. And that's when I started, told Dominique, we need to start CPR. You have training in CPR? Yes. Does Dominique have training in CPR? Well, Dominique is a certified lifeguard, and so is Ronald. So all of us are trained as certified CPRs. Now, after law enforcement arrived on the scene, did they move? Today or Ronald? They moved both of them. And where did they move them to? To the grass. At some point, were you told to leave the area where your daughter was? I believe so. Where did you I, go? They pushed me in the house. house for a while then? We was locked down in the house for a while, but no one would listen to me that my son was out there with no shirt on, no shoes on, and I kept saying I need to go get my son. Which son? Dominique. Thank you, ma'am. I don't have any other questions, ma'am. Carl.
Good afternoon, ma'am. Good afternoon, sir. I know that you've uh, been in the court um, since this began some time ago, and I'm sorry I have to ask you some questions, but uh, this is important, as you know. Um, you've heard all the testimony so far up to today, is that right? Yes. And this is very important for you because of what happened to your children. Yes, it's very important. And you want to see justice? Yes. But you didn't like Marquis. No, I did not. And you thought he was too old for your daughter. Is that right? That is correct. She was 23 or 24, you mentioned? 24. And he was in his 40s? He was 40. 40 years old. And that left a really bad taste in your mouth, the age difference. Of course it does. As a matter of fact, you said some things to him about that. I did. And can you tell me what those were? I called him a 40-year-old nigger. Uh, anything else? Pedophile. So you called Mr. Lloyd, who was 40 years old, dating your 24-year-old daughter, a pedophile nigger. Is that right? That is correct. And that was at the beginning. That's how you began your relationship with him. That is correct. And you didn't want him in your house. That is correct. And as a matter of fact, you told your children that you didn't want him in, his ho in the house. Is that right? That is correct. And that would be uh, your son, Ronald, who testified. Is that right? That is correct. And, and Dominique. Is that that right? is correct. And I also told my daughter, Sade. But you actually allowed him in your house for Thanksgiving. Only because she asked me. Because she loved him. In her own way. Is that right? I wouldn't say it was love. I would say more of lust. But, um... Yeah, she asked for permission. Mommy, I want to bring him over for Thanksgiving to eat. So you believe that the relationship was based entirely in lust? Is that right? That is correct. And at the time of the beginning of their relationship, she already had two children. Is that right? That is correct. And how old were they? At the, at the time, Tutabug was two, and Sean was eight. Okay. And so she had gotten pregnant initially pretty young age. Yes, she did. All right. Um, very similar with you and her. How old were you when you had her? Out. She was 23 and you were 40, 24 at the time? You were 40, 41 years old? When I had my daughter? No, no. At the time this event happened, how old were you? I was 42. Okay. And so she's 24, you're 42 at the time this event happened. Is that right? Mm hmm And so you kind of had a personal bias against the relationship with Marquis from the very beginning. Is that fair? That is correct. Okay. And as a matter of fact, when she, you found out that she got pregnant, you were not happy about that as well. Is that correct? I wouldn't say I wasn't happy about it. I just did not condone it. Did you suggest to her that she should get an abortion? I did not. 
and she wanted the baby. Is that right? I don't know. We didn't talk about that. She was very private. Is that correct? She liked to keep her private life private, yes. Like most adults. I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean to cut you off. Say that again. Like most adults. Okay. And, but you knew some things about her, and um, she was ambitious. She wanted to do things in life. Is that right? Correct. As a matter of fact, she um, at some point went to real estate school. That is correct. Okay. And she got a license. To no, she was in the process of getting process her license. Of getting a license. And that's why she was dating Marquis. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Yes. Okay. And she had worked at a, uh, with a gentleman who sold guns. Is that right? Yes. He was, he was a gun promoter. Is that right? I wouldn't say a gun promoter. I would say he owned a gun shop as well as a security firm. They were all tied in one. Okay. And you knew that she had, at one point, put a particular gun on her Instagram account that was pink in color. Do you remember that? Yes. Okay. And do you know where she got that from? She didn't own it. She was at Serge Renee's um, security firm mm -hmm. with the gun. Okay. And then, of course, she had this 9 millimeter that I think you mentioned was kept in a lockbox. Is that right? That is correct. I'm showing you what's remarked as a defense deposit exhibit A38. That's this gun here that was found in your front yard. That's correct. That's her gun. And you were very, very strict about how guns were kept in your house, at least this particular gun. Is that right? That's correct. You're the one who made her keep it in the lockbox. Is that right? That's correct. And you're the one that made her keep the ammunition separate in a separate location away from where the gun was stored. Is that right? No, that's not correct. Where would have been the ammunition? The clip would have been away from the gun. You had to put the clip in in order. It would be kept in the same box. It was the clip and the gun. All right. So in other words, the gun and the clip were kept separate in the box. Yes. And so for the clip to be put in the gun, she would have had to manually put it in, in some form or fashion. Is that right? That's correct. Okay. Can, can we approach for one second, Judge? Yes. And so you had mentioned that the police came to you and asked you about that gun. And I didn't hear when you said that they had done that. Excuse me, what's the question? When did the police come and ask you about the gun? Um, this was after they pushed us in the house. Okay. And 
We spoke with um, Detective Brian. Then that's when he asked me about the gun. Okay. So the day that this happened, the day of the shooting, Detective Savelli, Brian Savelli, yes, came into your house and questioned you about the gun that was in the front of the yard. He didn't say it was in the front of the yard. He just asked me, was there a gun? Did my daughter own a gun? And I told him yes. Okay. And he described to you what kind of gun, or you described to him what kind of gun it was? I believe he just told it, told me it was a gun, gun found outside the door. He didn't tell me what it was or anything. He asked me the description of the gun and I told him it was silver. Okay, like the gun that I showed you? That's correct. Okay, and then he asked to go upstairs and look in the box. That is correct. And so on this day that this happened, he walked upstairs with you and you opened the box and the gun was not there. That is correct. And he was aware of that at the time. That is correct. And what did he ask you further about the gun in relation to the box at that moment? Nothing. Okay. Okay. Seven minutes, Judge. Do you remember telling the police that uh, that you told Sade that we don't need another child? You don't need another child? I told her she did not need another child at this time because you're trying to establish yourself. And you mentioned to her that um, when you were saying that, you were saying you just passed your real estate state license. Is that right? No, we had this conversation private. Right. Would you like to see the statement that was occurred between you, Detective Savelli, and Diane Garcia Pagan on December 13, 2016, to refresh your recollection? Sure. Okay. I'm showing you. Thank you. Pretty much is what I said. I, I'm like, really, Sade? You don't need another child. You don't need another child. You just passed your real estate license. Let's get it together. Thank so you. basically, try to get your life together. Thank you. And the only thing you heard when you were on the phone was the gunshots, is that correct? That is correct. And then you ran downstairs and that's when you opened the door? That is correct. I have nothing further, Judge, thank you. Redirect. Thank, thank you, ma'am. May this witness be excused. Thank you, ma'am, you're free to go. Thank you. This way, ma'am. You have another witness you can put on in about half an hour? I think so. All right, call your next witness. Dominique Daniel.
your name, please, sir? Dominique Daniels. And how old are you, Mr. Daniels? I'm 21. And what do you do? Uh, I work for myself. I own my own lawn care. And uh, are you related to Stephanie Dixon Daniels? Yes, that's my mother. And are you related to Sade Dixon? Yes, that's my sister. And what's your date of birth? 1108-1997. So in December of 2016, you're then 19 years old? Yes, sir. Were you still in high school at that time? I believe so, yes. Uh, Mr. Daniels, I'd like to draw your attention to the date of December the 13th of 2016, late in the evening hours, um, starting at, uh, say, 7 or 8 o'clock. Do you recall where you were? Basketball court with my girlfriend. And where is the basketball court in relation to your, your home? Um, I believe Eden Park Road. That's the only thing I can say. Probably 13 minutes away. All right. So you've been playing basketball? Yes, sir. Uh, after you finished playing basketball, where'd you go? I uh, dropped my girlfriend. I had a friend drop my girlfriend off at Rosemont Superstop. Okay. So you dropped your girlfriend off, and then where'd you go? Home. And how did you get from the girlfriend's home to your home? Same person that dropped my girlfriend off. He stays in the neighborhood. Okay. So when you got home and were dropped off, did you see anyone outside? Uh, Markeith and my sister. And Markeith, do you mean Markeith Lloyd? Markeith Lloyd, yes. You see him here in the courtroom? Yes. Point to him, describe what he's wearing, please. The man over there with the blue sweater and pink jacket. I'm sorry. And what were they, what was your sister and the defendant doing when you got home? I believe talking. I asked, was everything okay? I didn't get a reply. I got a reply from Markeith saying, yeah, everything okay. And so what did you do? I headed inside. What did you do when you got inside? Took a shower. Now, after you took your shower, what did you do? Got back on the phone with my girlfriend. So you're on the phone with your girlfriend again. Something else, did something happen? Yes. What was the first thing that happened that caught your attention? I heard, what the fuck? Did you recognize the voice who said that? Um, I believe Markeith said it. Okay. Are you positive? Not sure. Okay. And uh, did you hear anything after that? I heard gunshots. Do you recall how many you heard? I believe four or five. And what did you do when you heard that it sounded like gunshots? I hung up the phone and proceeded to run downstairs. Was there anybody else going down the stairs? My mother. What did you do when you reached the bottom of the stairs? Uh, we both came to the door. And as we opened it the first time, I looked around. And I seen Markeith and my sister and brother on the floor. Okay. Well, let's start with your brother and your sister. Where were they? My brother was to the left of the door. My sister was to the right. Okay. And where was the defendant? Uh, by his car. And what did he do when you saw him by his car? I just saw him raise his hand, so I snatched my mother and closed the door. And after you snatched your mother and closed the door, what happened? I heard more gunshots. How long was it before you opened the door? Uh, seconds. And uh, did you hear something that, that indicated to you it would be safe to open the door? I just seen the lights go down, uh, right down the street. Like the car lights? Yes, sir. Okay. So what did uh, you do when you saw after you opened the door the second time, saw your brother and your sister there, what did you do? Uh, I began, well, I heard my brother ASAP, but I began um, running towards my, I heard my brother grunt, um, so I knew he was there, um, so I proceeded to my sister that was face down. Okay, and what did you do then? I rode her over. Okay, and then what? I proceeded on CPR. And did somebody else come along and do CPR? My mother. Did you at any point go back inside the house? Yes, sir. And where did you go? I ran upstairs to my dad's room. That was in, yeah, upstairs, first door to the right. And did you follow?
father up there? Yes, he was in the shower. Did you yell anything to your father as you were running up the stairs? Yes, I told my dad to get the gun. What gun were you referring to? The shotgun that's in the closet. How did you know there was a shotgun in the closet? Had it since my dad's dad gave it. My grandfather gave it to him in New York, but he passed away, so he just brought it back down. You ever shot it? No, sir. Have you ever seen your father or anybody else shoot it? No, sir. Why would you tell your father to get the gun? Just in case he came back. In case who came back? Marquis Floyd. Now, after, after that, did you go back downstairs? Yes, sir. What did you do when you went downstairs? I went back to doing CPR on my sister. Now, at some point, did law enforcement come? Yes. And where were you when law enforcement actually arrived? I believe I was on the sidewalk. In front of the house? Running, walking out towards them, saying that the shooter is not here. Okay. And you were, who were you telling that the shooter is not here? Deputies, sheriffs. Okay. How were you dressed? I just got out of the shower, so I was dressed for bedtime, gym shorts only. Uh, I was dressed for bedtime, gym shorts only. What was the temperature like? It was pretty cold. Now, once law enforcement arrived, did they let you back in the house right away? No. I was not able to come back in the house until 2 a.m. Thanks. You had a little bit of an exchange with some of law enforcement about those not yes. being allowed back in the house? I did. Did you know your sister had a gun? Uh, I was told, but I mean, not really. I didn't know t too much about it. Who told you? My sister. Did you know where it was? No. Did you know what kind of gun it was? No. Thank you, sir. I have no more questions. Frost. Yes, thank you. How are you, Mr. Daniels? Doing fine. How about yourself? Good. You said a few minutes ago that I want to take a moment to um, tell you before I start asking questions that uh, I understand it's a very traumatic event for you. Yes, sir. You said uh, a few minutes ago that when you walked by your sister, you said to her, is everything okay? And she didn't respond. Correct. You remember giving a deposition under oath? Yes. You swore to tell the truth? Yes. And you were asked the following questions and gave the following answers. Deposition of March 22nd, 2019. Dominique Daniels, page nine, lines 22 through 25. Question, do you, when you get out of the car, do they say anything to you? Answer. No, they didn't say anything. I said something to them. Listen, I'm not done. I apologize. Okay. Question, do you, when you get out of the car, do they say anything to you? Answer. I asked my sister, was everything okay? And she nodded her head and said, yeah. You remember giving that deposition? Yes. And giving that answer? Yes. So today, a few mi minutes ago, on direct examination, did you have a conversation with these prosecutors about how you were going to ask, be asked questions and answer questions? Yes. And did they tell you to say that? No. Now, when you went upstairs, you were talking on the phone uh, with your girlfriend, is that right? Yes. And there came a point when you Heard some shots ring off, is that right? Yes. And this was about 
10 minutes or so after you had come inside. Is that correct? I, I don't know about that. I took a shower, so I wouldn't say I took a 10-minute shower. Probably about 20, 30. You were on the phone, though, at least 10 minutes at that point. Six. Seven, 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 I, I literally just called her. Just got back on the phone with her as I got out. So it's not true that you were on the phone seven to ten minutes when you heard the statement? I mean, we was in conversation. I don't know how long the conversation was, though, sir. Okay. Would anything refresh your memory? A prior statement that you gave? That's fine, sir. All right. I'm going to show you a deposition that you gave on March 22nd, referencing page 13. And I ask you to go ahead and read that entire page. Yes, sir. See if it refreshes your memory. That you underline? I'm sorry? That you underline? Yeah. Or just the entire page? Read the entire page, but don't read it out loud. Just read it to yourself. And just look up when you're done reading it, sir. All right, I'm going to take that back. I'm going to re-ask you the question. Does that, first of all, does that refresh your memory? Yes. Okay. So about how long were you on the phone with your girlfriend? Six, seven minutes estimate. Okay. And when you on the phone with her, that's when you hear this statement, what the fuck? Yes, sir. Is that correct? And... Three shots rang out right after that statement. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay. And that statement d drew your attention so significantly that you said, I got to call you back. I got to go. Isn't that yes, sir. right? So it, it drew your attention, correct? Yes. And it was a male voice making that statement. I believe so, yes. Okay. And it wasn't your brother because your brother doesn't swear. He doesn't. And it didn't sound like your brother. No. And as a matter of fact, when you heard that statement, you threw the phone down, did you not? Yes. And your belief is that statement was made by Marquis Floyd. Isn't yes. That correct? I can have a moment, Jake. And the only thing that you heard, sir, was the gunshots all the way up to the point that you got to the door, the front door. Is that correct? I wouldn't say till I got to the front door, but, I mean, it was a pause between them. But you didn't hear anything else? No. No banging, no nothing? No. All right. Thank you. Redirect. All right, Mary's going to speak. Can you... Maybe it's going to speak. All right. Thank you, sir. You're free to go. Do you have a 15-minute witness? All right. Call your next witness. Ron State your name, please, sir. Ronald Daniels. Mr. Daniels, on December the 13th of 2016, were you employed? I was. And how were you employed? 
I work for Lynx bus operator. That's the regional bus service here? Yes, sir. And where were you living then? 6031 Long Peak Drive, Orlando, Florida. Did you work there? Did you work that day? Yes, sir. About what time did you get home from work? I would say probably about quarter to eight, quarter to eight somewhere in there. Okay. And when you got home, who was in the house? Uh, my son, Ron, my daughter, Sade, and the two babies, and my wife. And uh, did you bring dinner home with you? I did. What did you bring home? KFC. And what did you do after you got home? Uh, I went in there, hugged my daughter, picked two to bug up, was playing with him. And then I went, spoke to Ron, spoke to my, my wife, and proceeded upstairs. What did you do when you got upstairs? Got ready to take a shower. Did you actually get in the shower? I did. While you were in the shower, did something happen? Yes. What was the first thing? What happened? Began to hear loud pops. Okay. Did you, at that time, associate them with being gunshots? Nah, I thought they was firecrackers. Okay. What was the next thing that happened? I heard my wife, what the fuck, jumped up, started running downstairs. And as I'm trying to rinse myself off, my grandson, Deshaun, comes upstairs and says, Uncle Ron got shot. And now I'm like, what? <laughs> and uh, as, I, as I get downstairs, finally, from you know drying off and getting dressed, as I open the door, my son is laying to the left, my daughter's laying to the right. Is there anyone else outside? My wife, Dominique, a whole bunch of neighbors. Did you hear Dominique or anyone else say, get the gun? No, sir, I didn't hear that. Did you have a gun? Yes. What kind of gun did you have? 12 gauge shotgun. And how long had you had it? My dad died in 07, so I had it ever since. And where was it kept? In the back of the closet in the gun sheath. Have you ever fired that gun? No, sir. To your knowledge on that date, were there, was there any other guns in the house? Not in my knowledge, no. You did not know that your daughter had a gun in the no, house? No, I did not. Now, did you know on December 13th, did you know Marquis Floyd? Yes, I do. See him here in the courtroom? Yes. Point to him, describe what he's wearing, please. He's the gentleman sitting next to Mr. Letterman in the blue cardigan, pink shirt, pink tie. And uh, how did you know him? Through my daughter. Were you aware that your daughter was pregnant? Yes. Ever spoken to Marquis Floyd about that fact? Yes. Tell me about that conversation. I just, we were in the kitchen. I was emptying the dishwasher. He was sitting at the table. And I just told him, you know, you got to step up, take care of this baby. Did you acknowledge that you knew she was pregnant? Yes. Thank you, sir. How many other questions, Anna? Cross. Good afternoon. We met once before, I think. Yes. You formally, you came and gave a deposition. I did. I apologize. You have to go to me, sir. Mr. Lloyd brought an unfathomable about amount of pain into your life. Did he not, sir? 
Yes. Can even describe how much you were hurt by this loss of your daughter and the injuries to your family. True. And you love your wife very much. I do. You'd do anything for her. I would. And so you knew that your son, Ra, uh, your son Dominique, gave a statement to the police right after this happened, where he said he heard Marquise Lloyd say, what the fuck? Isn't that right? That's the statement he gave. And when you came in for deposition way back in May of 2019, I asked you what your wife said. And you never said anything about what the fuck, did you? That's what I heard. And as a matter of fact, you heard her say on the stand, what the heck, right? Trying to be politically correct. And so in other words, if your wife said what the heck or what the fuck, then it would be a problem for the state defending against a possible I'm going to have to object defense. to asking this witness to draw a conclusion what is or isn't a problem for us. Sustain. Great. You gave a statement on page 17 of your depot. And I asked you the question, lines 11 through 24. Question. So when you hear the shot, what do you do? Answer. At first, I thought it was, you know, firecrackers because it's coming close to the holidays. Kids are out there popping off. I thought it was firecrackers. But my wife started screaming, no, no, it's shooting. So I'm trying to get out of the shower and the next thing I know, Sean is standing in my door my grandson telling me Uncle Ron got shot. Do you remember that? That is what I said. Page 18. Question. And so the first time that you became aware sometime was something was awry was when your grandson said, grandson said something to you. Answer. When my wife started screaming and running downstairs. Question. Your wife's screaming, okay, and you said, she says, no, no, he's shooting. Answer, he's shooting my baby, he's shooting baby. Isn't that the deposition statement you gave, sir? It is. You had a shotgun that you kept in the house. Yes. And you made no secret of that. To who? Your All my family knew. knew. Your daughter knew. I said my family. Okay. And you knew your daughter kept a gun in the house? No. So your wife kept that from you? Yes. Because you wouldn't approve? Uh, I don't have a problem with more guns. My wife does. But you didn't know about it? No, I did not. And when you became aware that your daughter was pregnant and Marquise was the father, you had a man-to-man -man talk with him. Isn't that right? If you want to call it a man-to-man. -man. You knew that his, your wife didn't like him. I did know that. You knew that your wife was not allowing him in the house. When she was around, he wouldn't come in the house. But he was there other times. When she wasn't home, he came in. And on one occasion when he came in, you had a conversation with him about him being robbed. Nah. Remember that? Nah, we ain't never talked about him being robbed in the house. 
that conversation came up in the driveway once. Okay. And, and you knew that he had gotten robbed. That's what he said. At Texas Chicken. That's what he said. He said he got robbed. He ain't tell me all about that. All right. And you said. Better get you a firearm. I'm better get you a firearm. Now, when you had the conversation about him stepping up, you told him it was going to be his responsibility to take care of that baby. As a man, it is your responsibility to take care of your child. And he told you he would. He did. Nothing further. Thank you, Judge. Redirect. All right. Thank you, sir. Is this witness free to go? You're released, sir. You're free to go. Where's the gun? Ah. Seems like we've reached the end of the day. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to, it's 5 o'clock, so we're going to recess for the day. Send you all back to the hotel. Same rules apply as always. Have a good evening. We'll see you tomorrow at 9 a.m. We will have a short session tomorrow. We'll be ending at 2, so... What we're going to do is just provide a snack for you in the middle of the morning, and then you'll end up having lunch, a bigger lunch at the hotel later on. All right? Have a good evening, folks. Thanks. to address before we recess for the night. Anything we need to address before we recess? I don't think anyone's going to complain if we recess early on a Saturday. Um, so you're planning on recess on resting on Monday? Yes. All right. Okay. So you're resting on Monday. So. Uh, you may, of course. So you're gonna you're gonna rest on Tuesday. Yeah. All right. So um, why don't we do this? Let's go ahead and get the witnesses on Monday, except for whoever it is that has a problem that's coming until Tuesday. Then we'll do jury charge conference. Um, take a look at the um, jury instructions, the preliminary look at them, because those are gonna take it. That's gonna take a little bit of time, and see where we are then. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, Your Honor, I have the redacted body camera okay. videos here. All right. Uh, um, all right. This will be so. So this is now substituted as state's exhibit number one. I would, Your the Honor, other one remains in evidence. Yes, ma'am. I'd like to have it. As, as a take the one off of it. Mark this one as one. You know how to do this. I don't know why I'm telling you. Um, just covering all my bases, but the other one remains in evidence um, since the state wanted to play all of it. And have you all looked or had a moment in the middle of trying this case to determine whether you're going to be able to do anything with the other video?
Um, anything else? All right, courts in recess. See everybody tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. This thing? Okay. Oh, this isn't anything that involves me. Yeah. yeah. This is, you know, things I want at the hotel there.